Is it possible for you to shut the fuck up for 10 seconds? What got you into electronic music? Like also especially like the more like underground rave type? Well, I mean I've sort of always been interested in electronic music ever since I started listening to music. I mean I can't remember when I started listening to music. Probably when I was like a really, really small kid, but it was mainly my sister because she's like a few years older than me and she's always been going to raves and things like that. And sort of in like UK music culture, we've got a lot of um, stuff like garage, bass line, things like that, jungle, drum and bass. And those were the main genres that, that all the kids would be listening to. So naturally, through her, I just sort of started listening to it. And as soon as I started listening to it, I was hooked. I'd never really went to any festivals or any shit like that and went to like raves. Like my sister took me to my first rave. And um, yeah, sort of been going to them ever since. All around the UK, well not all around the UK, but near where I live in the north. There's quite a big scene for it, so the, there's loads of them on like every weekend. Where people like go to like a club or like a warehouse or something. Or they just set up like a uh, sound system in the middle of nowhere and blast tunes until someone comes and tells them to stop. Usually, like the police, there's a big free party scene in the UK where like anyone can come and listen for free, and they just set up massive rigs with all these subs and like tweeters and things like that. Have you ever like thought about one day playing at these raves? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm hopefully gonna get into DJing vinyls. So hopefully, uh, I'll be able to play because, like, I mean, I, I know some people. Like, I know like a person who owns a sound system already. So, it's called a Salt and Pepper Sound System. Look them up, Leeds, Leeds area. At the start, I was mainly listening to like bassline and donk, which are uh, were like popular genres in the north of England at the time. But then, as I started listening to stuff on my own instead of you know getting music from my sibling, I'd uh, moved on to like jungle and drum and bass, and uh, then eventually hardcore and uh, much more underground rave genres. And then that sort of just spiraled out of control and I was hooked on any form of underground electronic music. Not not like mainstream st styles like Big Room and stuff like that, but like proper underground gritty old school styles that sort of time has forgotten. Um, hardcore is like one of the most more like, um, hold what I say, like more... Extreme. Most more extreme music and it also seems to be like one of your like fortes when it comes to music like production and yeah. also listening. Um what what got you into like more hardcore music since it's so fringe kind of fringe music for some people who cannot stand like the extreme side of it? Um I think possibly brain damage on my part. But honestly, it's just, um, I don't know, like, I, I just sort of listened to it and my mind, like, clicked. It's like, why, well, why do people like metal and stuff like that? Because it goes hard and it, you know, it, it gets you hyped up. It's fast music for, um, for fast people, I guess. Like, if you're one of those people that have, like, maybe short attention spans or whatnot, <clears throat> hardcore is, like, ADHD-driven almost. It's very much, like, fast-paced. And I've always sort of been driven to that type of music. What are the artists slash producers who have like influenced your music the most? Well, for hardcore and sort of hardcore techno styles, I'd say the DJ producer of uh, Death Chant Records, which is a UK hardcore techno label. Massive, massive influence from him and his um, co-producer Hellfish. And just all the names on that label, the Death Chant label in general, massive inspiration for the hardcore sound good to have a uh, sort of UK hometown label representing the hardcore scene as well as they do. And then um, since hardcore is Dutch genre, um, Neophyte, like one of the biggest Dutch hardcore producers and another really big inspiration. His um, early old school sounds, very hard, very fast and would pave the way for a sort of new millennium style of hardcore. There's, there's like a huge difference like between being like a casual music fan and like actually just making those sounds. Yeah. Like there's yeah, a huge, true. huge like step up in the scene and like the interactivity because you are like one of the people in the scene like making the music. So the thing is like what, 
what got you actually like into like the mindset of like just yeah I'm going to be a producer and like I I, oh. I just wanna make I just wanna make this stuff you know for fun or something. Pure pure boredom, like just messing around. Like I knew of a shitty website called Loop Labs. I just messed around on that, made some absolute trash like music. But I was like the only person on the music website that was making like hardcore. So I was making like hardcore on that. It, like it's basically just a little library of samples and loops, and then you can use those and you make them. And it's like the most basic door ever created. So I just sort of messed around on that. Just yeah, just purely out of boredom really. And then, and then I moved on to audio tool, which is a lot better. So you mentioned about audio tool, which is like called digital audio workstation. For like people who aren't producers, it's basically the software that we use to produce yep. music. Um, audio tool is like Gabo's main DAW that he uses to produce music. Yep. And what got you into like using audio tool for like such a long time? You have been using it like, well, for like five I mean, years now. I don't know. I think <laughs> to a certain degree laziness. Like I've never bothered to move on and actually buy a proper software like FL Studio or like Ableton, Cubase, stuff like that. I've never really bothered to um, move on because Audio Tool is just like perfect for me because it's free, it's browser based, and you can upload samples to it. So you can like it does everything that I need it to do. It does have its limitations, obviously, because it's a free software made by um, some German dudes. But yeah, I'd say it it fits my needs for the moment but i don't plan on staying on it forever but when i transition from audio tool i don't know probably sometime in the near future when do you think like the change is going to come like when do you think you are going to hit your like absolute limit with the track production since you are you have been really pushing that lately i think as soon as i get into this djing thing i reckon i'll probably switch to some other software because it, it's getting to the point now where you start of limiting yourself and then that way you can't actually reach your full potential. I'd say soon, probably in like the next year or so, they'll probably move to maybe Ableton or uh, Cubase or something like that. What kind of equipment do you use to produce your music? Well, the main one is my computer. Obviously, that's what allows me to access all the software. The, the, the main thing is software and the digital audio workstation. But every now and again, I like to dabble in some hardware that I've got. Like, I've just got a little MIDI keyboard that has some um, knobs and uh, faders on it. So what, so what I can do with Audio Tool is I can plug that in and I can map knobs and stuff on um, Audio Tool to the one on my MIDI keyboard. So I can do sort of more live live stuff which um, is uh, fun sometimes and i have a record player probably around 700 vinyls of all the genres i listen to all the old school stuff plenty of techno house um and hardcore and jungle and stuff like that that could, that um, could come in like really handy especially with the sampling yeah 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 absolutely um and i also have a couple of drum machines but i don't use them very much i've got some korg vocals uh, the bass and the beats I don't really use them that much, and I'm actually thinking of selling them to uh, further the DJ goal. Many producers in this like field experience problems with like creativity when they when they just can't get any good tracks out. Like that would be either because of burnout or their own like restrictions. What do you think like causes you to like just be so consistent with your track releases and your ability to just Pass through that barrier of like burnout. Well, I don't have a method. It is completely just spontaneous bursts of energy that seemingly come from nowhere. I mean, I don't really know to be honest. But recently, I, I've been getting better at it. But in the past, I would have short bursts of energy where I could make track and then I wouldn't produce anything for ages. And that was like under no real system or method or anything like that like creative block i don't really have a like a method to get through it i just if i don't have any inspiration i don't but lately it has been seeming like i've been getting less creative block and more bursts of energy which is good how long is usually your track process like that could be like a maybe big factor how you will tackle these subjects well it honestly it depends sometimes i can bang out a track in a day other time it'll take a month other times it'll take a month but I usually just sort of open it up, mess around like 
with a sound for a bit and then once I find a sound that I like then I'd go forth rather than making a track and then switching sounds as I go along. I'd sort of find a sound that I'm definite is good and then I'll roll with that. Basically do you like start from like a sample or like a... Most of the time I like to work with samples because I'm, I'm not that talented as a producer. I'm, I'm not well versed in uh, music theory or sound engineering. I try to teach myself where I can and I'm definitely getting better at it but I know quite a little about the subject. I just sort of, you know, teach myself as, as I go along. But if I can, like, you know, like patch a synth myself or make something from scratch, I will because it's, uh, it's a lot more rewarding to make a track and finish it knowing that you've actually constructed the sounds yourself rather than um, just sampling something. But then again, it is good to sample because you can get, you know, get those classic noises for, uh, for the genre that you're producing. Like, um, stuff that I can't make on the synths in audio tool like certain certain hoover sounds and um, like old school synth sounds like alpha juno sound thing like that and that is what you could perhaps achieve with like the more advanced DOS yeah yeah when, absolutely. When, the, when, the, when the time comes and you are gonna do yeah. like that switch so you can like start like building up those classic synths by yeah, yourself. yeah, and uh, with um, the thing is with uh, with Audio Tool, you can't add these things called plugins. There's like a three synths that come with the software, and that's it. Like that's your lot. That's all you've got, which is uh, quite limiting. Yeah, like three basic plugins can only just get you so far. Mm -hmm. On ach especially achieving like certain really specific sound. I'm going to assume it's like some old school like synthesizer from like yeah, the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Hoover, Dominator, Mentasm, those sounds from the early rave days. Do you have like any hopes or like plans for the future of your career? Honestly, no. It is mainly just a hobby. Um, it is core. Like I'm just doing it for fun. I'm, I've, I've never been interested in money or anything like that. O obviously, like everyone wants to do what they love for a job. Like if I could start making money off this stuff then that's just a bonus, but realistically, I don't actually expect any of that. But for the future, I hope to just, honestly, I just, I just hope to get better, and that's it. Just keep improving, start DJing, start spinning vinyl, and um, hopefully make some hardcore beats. <laughs>